Tow Road here with Billy the Skid, and we're at the Rutherford B. Hayes Presidential Library and Museum. What do you think, Skid? My uh, second favorite of all time. So I've been looking forward to this for years. Number 19, buckle up. About ready to take a ride on the toll road. Should be an awesome foyer into your house. So we're in the Rutherford B. Hayes Museum and we'll see you in the Oval Office and check out the per what hey, those are secret documents. What are you taking pictures of there? The Resolute Desk was a gift to the United States from Britain, Queen Victoria. When it arrived at the White House on November 23, 1880, President Hayes immediately sat down and wrote a brief note to eminent history historian George Bancroft. President Hayes had the desk placed in the green room of the White House for visitors to view before moving it to his private office on the second floor. Its history is recounted on a brass plaque affixed to the desk, which reads, HMS Resolute forming part of the expedition sent in search of Sir John Franklin in 1852, was abandoned in latitude 74 degrees 41 north longitude. How many pages is that? It's, it's like <laughs> long. Anyways, it discovered and so they dedicated this because we went out in search. Every president since Rutherford B. Hayes, except President Johnson, Nixon, and Ford has used this desk. Why did those guys use it? Too good for it? jackasses <laughs> here's where you make your presidential speeches here my fellow americans if i am elected again i will free all chickens from kentucky fried chicken and that bastard colonel sanders long thank you live popeyes well bill i found the uh, presidential family tree and from the looks of things you go down one, two, that's you. That looks just like me. Yeah, that's a young you, Rutherford Platt Hayes. Must have been a common middle name for him. Here's another Rutherford Platt, Platt. Hayes. Um, I think because of the Platt family line. Ah, now we're almost making sense. Did they marry into uh, their own family? <laughs> Where are all these dollhouses? Can not get better in presidential dollhouses? A glare though. Oh, here's one you can play in, Bill. What the hell? Got yeah, here, Bill. Looks like his personal weapon cache. Yeah. <laughs> this guy was uh, armed, I would say. British mortar captured during the War of 1812. I think he was a prepper. <laughs> yeah, I would say he was like one of the first preppers there. Hey, that's what Weapons we need to collected do. by Webb C. Hayes, okay. That's just his nickname. <laughs> yeah, I think that was his dad. Yeah, so there. So his dad was a prepper. Yep. Yeah, I said he was uh, armed for... Bear trap. Bear. Union and Confederate weapons of the Civil War. I got this one. You got what? This kind of home without the Without bayonet. the bayonet, what, did your dad have it or something? That's just one of them that's been passed down through the family. Why don't you pass it down to me? Uh, it's at home. And let your brothers know they'll uh, I want it. 
There's your next hat right there, Bill. Oh, yeah. With the horse hair? It's got to have the horse hair. Yep. Every hat I have, it's got horse hair on it. Holy crap, man. All I got to say is the guy that held that one, that's got to be a pretty... Okay, yeah. Well, let's just start from one side to the other here. This is what a Chinese gingle, nine feet long, operated by three Chinese soldiers. Man, I wonder how far it actually shoots. That'd be pretty cool. So I see on this Chinese cannon that old local expert Billy Skid gave me some wrong information. <laughs> Webb Hayes is the second son of President Hayes. Why would you, why would you tell me it was his, his dad? I, didn't you read the family tree upstairs we just looked at? I can't read. I went to Meadowdale. Never heard of it. Go ahead and fire it. Ah. Let's, let's see you, let's see you do your work there. Do your work out. You ready for the Union Army? Sure not. <laughs> Talking about the controversy, even in the uh, Electoral College, because he didn't get enough votes. Yeah, that's why they called him Rutherford, Rutherford Fraud B. Hayes, was yeah. one of the terms they gave him. Well, let's face it, did you really want Samuel Tilden to be your president? No. Where would we be today? Who knows? I mean, he disappeared out of history. Where, where was Tilden from? Let's see what states look like. Uh, Florida back then wasn't too popular. Only four uh, electoral votes. Yeah. Ohio still has about the same. Yeah. So it looks like old Tilden, he was just a New York, New York boy. Texas. Looks like uh, Hayes dominated the Northeast, Midwest, except for Indiana for some reason. Who cares about and, those and Indies? The, and the uh, Far West. So I'm reading this, back in that time, there was 185 electrical, elect, electoral votes were needed to be president. And Tilden, that loser, only had 184. Yeah. Hayes had 165, and then there was some political uh, swillings, I you'd say, turned the uh, wow. I mean, turned the tide for uh, Rutherford, scaring some of the needed voters away. You know, I mean, that's a right that you know his name wasn't even on some ballots. Hmm. They were trying to cheat old Hayes out of there. Some of the uh, same kind of voting stuff that. Happening today seems to be happening way back then. Yeah, history does repeat itself, that's for sure. Let's see more about the controversy. So he probably is already supposed to be in office there. Yep. Or no. 21. No, the inauguration must have been later. Yeah, it was then. March 3rd. Yeah, now they do it in January. January yeah. Counting, 3 p.m., more from both parties. Despite not knowing who would be president until March 2nd, thousands of people celebrated the inauguration in the streets of D.C. on election night. Yeah, so Hayes ended up beating him 185 to 184. That's kind of like a triple overtime victory there, I'd say. Yep. And then he came and became the uh, greatest president of all time, number 19. What do you have over here? That's a big key. What is that open? The key to the city of Nashville, Tennessee. Opens up Tennessee. There was country music even invented back then? What was in Nashville? And Had to be. In uh, 1877. And this old, that's not a hurricane there. That's just in a piece of wood. That's probably where they got the hurricane from. Yeah, I don't know. The hurricane cost me uh, 39.99. Hurry Hayes, pretty close. Hayes, hurry Hayes. Yeah, hurry Hayes becomes hurricane. 
Back then, you know, if you didn't have a beard, you weren't going to become president. If you don't have your own plate, you stunk. Yeah, I need to get my own plate. Souvenir de Philadelphia. Philadelphia fee. They didn't know how to spell Philadelphia back then. And I mean, one of the really great things about being president besides getting free saws is uh, getting um, Indian pottery of pelicans. Yeah. I mean, and, what other president can say has a totem, man? And I was and it, a spot on top to uh, put, put his picture. Yeah. yeah, which I don't know why they didn't do that. He didn't want to seem too, you know, stuck on himself. Here's some uh, to. presidential gold nuggets. Looks like they could use a little bit of a shining there. Wonder how many uh, ounces that is. That's I worth some money. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys didn't see no gold nuggets. No, no there gold. was none there when we got here. Okay, I don't know what you have in your. Uh, kitchen to, to uh, display your quail and duck plates, but uh, this probably is not this as big as this. Some fancy I mean, here's eyeball all about my Yeah. Step back. I'm <laughs> stepping back. I just got yelled at by a voice from above. Here, I'll stand next to it. Don't get too close to it. You will get in trouble. Hey, careful. Here's here's an owl, random owl. What's this owl all about? Barn owl captured alive in the Washington Monument. Not alive now, oh. unfortunately. I think I just found the origins of the Mothman. Oh yes. Apparently, the Mothman was a butterfly found in the White House. Well, that's what they say, but doesn't that butterfly look eerily like the Mothman? Put the man in there. That's what I mean. Those pictures that we got from evolution, yeah. Because oh, yeah. this was 1878, so and that was 1967. Yeah, so you know another 80, 90 years of evolution, and yeah. you have a mock. And then that one down there, kind of. What is going on? Looks like it. Now this guy has. That, you know you've made it when you get your own face on a shot glass. They call it a Voss all you want. That's a shot glass. Yeah. He liked his drinks, man. Um, okay, these are kids. I'm going to say these are little. What do we got on the wall here? A life not in the service of others is a life wasted. Hmm. And here's my favorite from Maddie. Save the turtles. Be good, don't be bad. Hmm, good advice. Everybody out there, be good, don't be bad. Check. And by the way, if you're out there, Evelyn, love you too. Here's Maddie Must Love, one of the best movies of all time, Bill and Ted's. Where, called where are you? I Can Pick Up Trash and Be Kind to Each Other. Yes. Ready for help, always. And take time to be a good listener. Oh, behave yourself. How uh, topical for where oh, we are. Yeah, that's that's using puns to your advantage. You need a they got some. Off. They got some brains. Uh, please take this advice. Give money to the poor. I'll put my address in the description. Yes. Help people at all tins. So remember, help people at all tins. Good yes. advice. So we were talking earlier about the other cane. Apparently uh, he probably did have a hurricane because it says right here, Rutherford V. Hayes collected nearly 100 canes and walking sticks. No matter what you say about the man, he had taste. Look at that bracelet that's over there, man. Oh, this guy knew. This guy had style. 
I mean, look at his hat. Everybody thinks Abe Lincoln's the only one that can wear a hat like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to inform you, but Rutherford B. Hayes could, would, and did. Look at this. He even rode in style. President Hayes' carriage. This is how you rode back in those days. I would like to ask. You were too close nope. to the exhibit. No. Please step back. We're just taking a picture, man, huh? on the end, because it sees that you're on the inside might I'm, touch it. I'm getting in trouble left and right. How security yeah. notice. Yeah. I would love to ride in this. If I did a tour, something like that would be. So if you visit this place, you'd probably get yelled at like me. Walking through Spiegel's Grove now towards Rutherford's house. I'd say he was a wealthy man, wouldn't you? So would I. And from what I understood, this house was actually still part of the family, owned it and lived in it generations later after even the, uh, it's right next to the presidential library. I would too. It's a I mean, that's a nice looking but, house on the outside. And they would, they still live there. And people would come and visit this. And I guess after a while they got tired of people coming over and looking in the windows and, which is probably what we're gonna do right now. Beautiful house though. They do offer tours of this. We passed on this today because, well, we set off too many alarms in the other place. Yeah, I don't don't need handcuffs. I mean, look at that chandelier. Yeah, that's just can't class. see it through the glare yeah. here, but and I mean, it even goes back further in here. But if you're out this way and you got the time and and it what was it thirteen dollars getting the museum museum and house tour it was only twenty dollars. Yeah, it's cheap, well worth the price. Uh, for all the history that was in there, I mean, we joked around a lot in there, but there's a lot of cool stuff to check out, a lot of historically significant items. But we're going to wander back through Spiegel's Gro Grove, because in the very back, you'll find the grave of Mr. Hayes. Here's the final resting place of Rutherford B. Hayes, which apparently his middle name is Bertrand. It's probably why he just goes by B. And his wife, Lucy Webb Hayes. Hey, Bill, do you see his middle name there? Ruth, you know what B stands for in Rutherford? Uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, you know what the B stands for? What? Bertrand. So this is Colonel Cook, Hayes. excuse me, Colonel Webb Cook Hayes, his second son. Let's see his wife here. And what's on this rock here? It looks like people are donating peanuts. Feed the squirrel. Yeah, so this will be the final resting place of our 19th President of the United States, Rutherford Bertrand Hayes. Okay, that's gonna about do it for our visit here to the Rutherford B. Hayes Presidential Library Museum. Uh, what'd you think of the place, Bill? It is worth the trip. It yeah. is a nice, well taken care of. Yeah, the Spiegel Grove here, which beautiful landscaped area here. They got a bunch of trees. Some of them they say date back from the, even when the Revolutionary War happened. Uh, the house, the museum itself, or oh, we mentioned earlier, this is in Fremont, Ohio. It's um, within an hour of Toledo. It's up in the northwestern part of Ohio, but uh, definitely a place you should check out. Especially if you're visiting Cedar Point. It's not too yeah, far away. There, definitely. Kelly's Island. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. Having all that fun, you might as well learn something too while you're out. <laughs> you should already know about our president. If they don't, but hey, you know, I know what some of the schools hey. do and don't teach, so. Yeah, I was in Canada once, and it's Canadian up there thought Ronald Reagan was a president from Canada, so you never know what you know until you know right. it. You know what I mean? Yep, I know. You know? I know. All right, that's going to do it for now, and 
who knows where the toll road will lead to next.